putting it down or anything, but that's just the truth. And I'm sure there's things like, and this is the nurse in me, things like diet, exercise, mm-hmm. quit smoking. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, there, there are things that you can't change because of your genetics, but there yeah. are things that we have control over, like getting your blood pressure under mm-hmm. c- under control. And, and going to the doctor. Going to the doctor. Your cholesterol has to be right. Yeah. All the things are risks that, th- those things are risks that people really need to take and spend a lot to give a lot of attention to because little basic things, as I share with the groups when I speak with them, are things that you can do to prevent the stroke. And education, what you're yeah, doing, yeah. is such a good thing because I've heard so many people say, I don't feel bad and I stopped taking my blood pressure medicine mm-hmm, mm-hmm. a month ago. Mm-hmm. And w- with proper education, people are not going to take that attitude, I don't think. I think with proper education, they will do much better. I, I hope <laughs> so. I, now, examples of the grieve injury, um, in the literature that you gave mm-hmm. me, would it, it told those examples, and can you tell me a little bit about the okay. degrees? Well, the degrees are um, mild and then moderate to severe, the severity. And um, these mild brain injuries are 75 to 85 percent of, of all brain injuries. Oftentimes, persons are not hospitalized. Co- concussions are often mild brain injuries, and because a lot of sports concussions, they don't know they have a brain injury. And I want the public to know a concussion is a brain injury right. indeed. And then you have, um, although they may experience problems for several months, sometimes their symptoms go away and they feel that they're okay, but oftentimes that individual may, may experience another brain injury. Um, now you have the moderate to severe brain injuries that are 15 to 25 percent of brain injuries. Those are the most severe. They all usually sustain some alteration of consciousness and typically hospitalized, so you know that there's a brain injury. If it's severe, it's going to be recurrent. Right, right. And some medical attention, obvious. You know, there's been so much talk in the news lately about traumatic brain injury mm-hmm. associated with our troops in Iraq mm-hmm. and Afghanistan. And, you know, what what role do you play and, and does your organization play in dealing with these people when they're returned home? Because I know that the effects of, of these traumatic brain injuries mm-hmm. are sometimes very long-lasting, like you said yes. earlier. Um, we've been very active these last these last couple of years with the uh, Virginia Wounded Warriors Program and the Defense and Veterans uh, Brain Injury Center, which works directly with the veterans and the um, Centers for Control of CDC. And this way, when they, we can all collaborate and share ideas and give them services that they need and really just make a network of services for them. So when they come in, when they come home, if the, if the um, Centers for Disease Control or the Virginia Wounded Warriors Program gives us some information, and then we can keep referring them to, until they get the right services. The Virginia Wounded Warriors Program offers services to all veterans and their families. So if a, vet- a veteran has come to me recently, and I referred him to the Virginia Wounded Warriors Wonderful. Program, and they were able to help him and give him guidance. You know, the people, some of these people, are not only coming home with post-traumatic stress syndrome, mm-hmm. they've got the head injury too, mm-hmm. and, and the lasting effects of both those things, it must be very difficult for these people. I mean, it I is think very, and they've got to get the right services. They need a neuropsych evaluation. I think the VA is really, really on top of it now. Um, uh, they probably have been because of so much. These are blast injuries. These aren't shots so much. Right. And from the pressure of the, of the IEDs, it, it's an injury, and it takes some time for them to recognize that they have a brain injury. Because a lot of us think it's post-traumatic stress disorder, right. but it's a brain injury. I've been working with the student veterans that are returning that want to go to college. So I have Longwood University, uh, Lynchburg College, and also we have student veteran organizations to work with those vets that are coming back so they can go to college. And That's people wonderful. have to know, the administration has to know that they have a brain injury, and the students have to be prepared to understand what a brain injury is all about. I just think that's wonderful that yes, that service is. is out there, people. Yes. And, you know, stuff you see in the news, so many of them are coming home, they have no jobs, and, and then they're, they've got these things on them, too. So it's nice to know that they've got a place that they can turn. And the more we put the word out there for everyone to know, there are services available for the veterans, for the persons, the seniors, for the kids, just speak up. Come to the Brain Injury Association of Virginia. Check with, the, check with your Veterans Administration. There is some information out there, and we're really working very closely together to offer some. And now our troops, they're coming home with non-traumatic brain injury as well. Mm-hmm. Is, that, is that true? Okay. Yes, okay. they're coming home um, with non-traumatic brain injury. Um, the 
energy from a moderate to moderate energy to mild. However, um, many times it's diagnosed as post-traumatic stress disorder. So I think we're paying more attention now to really doing the right tests and whatnot to identify the type of brain injury and the extent of it. Plus there's been more on television mm -hmm. about it, which mm -hmm. has made the public aware, I think. I think Bob Goodyear, the anchor, he's the one. He was an ideal person because he was there. He experienced a very traumatic brain injury, and because they acted so fast and got him medical attention, and they were able yeah. to remove his skull so the brain fell and not damage itself anymore. That's how he has survived the way right. he has. And he's doing great because I've seen him on TV. He really has. Yeah. I, I think he's to be admired for what he's done. Mm -hmm. And, you know, these people do require rehab for, for a long time. It's a life, it's many lifetime of rehab. And I'm just going to share some figures with you okay. here. According to the uh, Department of Veteran Services, um, Virginia has, in 2008, Virginia had over 800,000 veterans uh, of, in the war. And 20% um, of so returning from Iraq and Afghanistan reported symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder or depression. Only half have sought treatment. So mm -hmm. they want to go on their own. They figure they can work it out. They really want to return to their families and not have to feel that they are just, right. and that's just how it is. 19% of returning service members experience possible traumatic brain injury. 7% of returning service members report both probable brain injury and post-traumatic stress disorder and depression, which is, which is a lot. That's a lot to try to, to try to fathom, to deal with. And when you look at what they've done for this country, mm -hmm. what they've given, yeah. to know that there's a place that they can come back and be taken care mm -hmm. of is, is, I think, a, a big, excellent. huge plus. One other thing I, I think that a lot of us in this area are concerned mm -hmm. with, when you have children, you have children in school, children in sports, sports kid injuries and yes. injuries that kids sustain when they fall off bicycles. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, are some of these injuries are seasonal injuries, of course, yes, depending yes. on the, the, the uh, sport. The sport. Uh, wh what most specifically do you see well, associated with those particular things? Well, we look at schools. Uh, we, look at the, we talk with the schools and we treat, we're talking about safety. Um, we're looking at sports injuries. Uh, we can work with um, football, contact any contact sport, uh, baseball, because you know the head is very much so involved. And dead on right. the, even when they just, even if it's just when they're off the bat, you know. Um, and then recreation, school recreation. That's very important for the children to be aware and to let their teacher know and their parents know when they've fallen. Bicycle, um, skateboard, all these things going outside. It's really great that you're involved in the sports, but the. Athletic directors of the schools, we've been, I've been sent them packages of information just to be aware. So those are the, s those are the mostly they sustain a lot of concussions. That's why we have right. the athlete concussions in sports, sportsmen. So if a young man doesn't feel well, don't send him back in. Or, or if, if you do, don't, if you're the young person and you don't feel well, let your coach know so that they can maybe give you some help. You know, the repeating theme I hear in what you're saying mm -hmm. is education, ed it is, education. It is. And, you know, if parents know what to look for, if schools know what to look for, then the possibility of getting kids with these head mm -hmm, injuries mm -hmm. to a doctor, to a hospital, mm -hmm. very, very soon after the injury will make yeah. them, you know, how they, their survival rate, yeah. that kind of thing. But when your child's head has been hurt, like talk to the parents, we deal with all of this. When your child's head has been hurt, and they say, Mommy, I don't feel good, I'm dizzy or whatever. I want that parent to give them, to get them to the doctor, get them to the emergency room. Because who, who knows, it could be a hematoma. Fall, on, fall in the playground. Tell me, you know, what can a parent look for? Well, uh, there's certain symptoms that we have here that I don't want to miss any. So <laughs> just, I really, it's very important that we don't miss all the symptoms. And the symptoms can be dizziness, headache. Um, it can be, um, oops, let me just turn this over properly. Uh, it can be um, not speaking well. It can be nauseous. They can become nauseous. Many things that can happen when you know your child or your loved one isn't functioning properly. Right. It's very obvious. Let's not take it lightly. Let's not take that lightly. And sometimes they can't focus. Their vision is off. A lot of things happen. Equilibrium is off. So a lot of variations on the theme can happen. And even with the seniors, I tell them the same thing. If you, if you even take a step and it's not right, give it a, give it a second. Check yourself out. 